Hey there everybody, Sage Popham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, and welcome to our new issue here on the blog. And, um, you know, there's something that I've been thinking a lot about lately. You know, I've just been kind of looking at the state of the world and looking at everything that's been going on, you know, within the whole political thing and all of the stuff going on culturally and just with all of, especially with all of the fires that we've been having out here on the West Coast. It just feels like things are really heating up, uh, literally, on planet Earth right now. And I've just been thinking about us as human beings and our relationship to nature, our relationship to the Earth, and the healing that is required of all of us right now as human beings, and how the practice of herbal alchemy or spagyrics uh, has this, what I see as great p power and potency to bring healing to the people at this time in a way that I see is really required. And, you know, one of the things that I've been looking at and kind of thinking a lot about is this dynamic of separation. Um, that's a critical component of the spagyric process, is the, this process of separating out the, the principles of a plant in the ways in which they're prepared alchemically. And kind of looking at our culture and thinking about human beings and where we're at in the world right now, and, and, and seeing that there's this core separation uh, in our culture that I think is really at the root of a lot of the problems that we're facing on the earth right now. And I think that core separation is this illusion that I would say a majority of human beings on the planet are carrying that thinks that we're separate from nature. It, you know, it's like, I always like to talk about the difference between you know, the world and the earth. And it's like the world is, you know, everything that the human beings have created from our minds. You know, if I just think, I live out here in the country, so I'm kind of surrounded by nature and trees and plants and the earth. But every time I go to a city, it's like, wow, you know, it's kind of overwhelming in a way. Being surrounded by all of these man-made objects that are human-made objects that ultimately are arising out of the human mind. It's like the world is the human mind made manifest. Whereas the earth is something greater, something greater than us created the earth, you know, thinking of the way the elements are and the way nature is and how, you know, that obviously we didn't create that. So we're, and we're a part of that, but we've created this world that has separated us from nature. And to me, this is one of the core, um, I would say this is the core fundamental issue that we're facing on this planet right now. And this separation, this illusion that we carry that we're separate from nature, um, I think is behind a lot of the major issues that we're facing. And because of that core separation that it creates the, the, these deeper layers of separation within ourselves where, you know, our mind is separated from the heart. Our intuitive faculties are separate from our rational mind. Uh, you know, in our culture, you know, our science is separate from our spirituality. And, and in that way, we create this world that is separate from the earth. And to me, the goal of the healing that we need to do at this time is individually within ourselves to heal those splits inside of us, you know, to heal those splits of our, between our heart and our mind, our body and our spirit, um, so that we can become integrated unto ourselves. And when that happens on a large scale, I believe that we have this ability to create a world that is a reflection of the earth, right? That we can create a way of living, a holistic way of living on this earth that is integrated into the natural ecosystem that is Gaia, right? That is this planetary intelligence that we live on. And, and in order for that to happen, though, I believe that there's 
deep levels of healing that have to happen within human beings, right? And to me, that healing is far beyond our bodies, right? That it, that's, we need a healing in our minds and in our hearts and even down to this soul level healing where we're able to heal ourselves in a way that reintegrates ourselves and our consciousness and the way we live our lives into that intelligence of nature to remember that we're a part of nature and that everything that we do is impacting the earth. And and, and so I believe that the plants hold this very special power to do this. I believe that the herbal medicines you know, they grow out of the earth, right? That they're of the earth. They're the living intelligence, the medicine, the healing medicines that grow from the earth. And, you know, the way we, a lot of people tend to think of herbal medicines is, you know, oh, they're these plants that you can use instead of taking a drug for, you know, your common symptoms and issues that you face in your health. And while that's definitely a part of herbal medicine, you know, the way I see it is that's just really kind of the superficial aspect of what these plants have the ability to do and, and the level of healing that plants are able to reach. But in order for us to have this deeper model of practicing herbal medicine, of using plants in a way that is bringing about not just taking away our symptoms or healing in our physical bodies, um, there's, there's a way to use herbs that, that drives them deeper into the constructs of the mind and, and maybe the <clears throat> emotional traumas that we've gone through, these, these deep wounds that we all carry as human beings and that the plants have the ability to take those wounds and to transform them into our gifts, into our talents, into our purpose, into understanding who we really are. You know, I always say that, you know, there's a plant out there that kind of reflects who you are. Like there's a teaching in that plant. There's a healing in that plant that brings a part of you back to yourself. An essential part of yourself is kind of reassembled into the architecture of your being through, through that, that healing medicine of that plant. But in order to practice herbal medicine in this way, in this kind of deeper, more, I would say, transformational context, uh, I believe that there's some new ways that we have to learn to see plants, that you have to learn to approach a plant and a person very differently from the ways that I see most models of herbal medicine are taught. You know, we're t I'm talking a lot about this dynamic of separation, and we even see that in herbal medicine, in the way herbal medicine is practiced. You know, a lot of times, you know, we'll see, you know, maybe herbalists that have a much more clinical focus. They're focused more on healing the body, healing physical symptoms, healing disease. And that's really great. Obviously, we need more of that out in the world. But sometimes in that process, there's this overlooking of maybe more of these psycho-spiritual dynamics um, in the ways that people can carry certain ways of thinking, certain ways of feeling that are influencing their physical health. And obviously the flip side of that is true as well, right? Where we see maybe um, people that work more with subtle forms of herbal medicine, more the vibrational properties of the plants to work through those psychological and emotional dynamics. But then in the process, maybe they're overlooking those symptoms in the body that are linked to that psychological emotional dynamic. So there's kind of this separation in the way that we see a person and kind of seeing like, oh, well, the physical symptoms are over here and the psycho-spiritual symptoms are over there. And it's like, there's not a link between them. There isn't really, from what my research, there isn't a whole lot of systems out there that connect those together in an integral way that enable people to address the wholeness of the person. We also see this in plants too, right? The way the plants are understood, you know, we've got everything from the chemistry of the plants and their energetic properties and, and the psycho-spiritual properties of the plants, but oftentimes they're talked about really separately, right? That we're not seeing the way, the wholeness of the plant, the way a plant carries this intelligence that is reflected in its chemistry and in its energetics and in its you know, um, physiological actions and the way it works through the organ systems and the way it influences 
the psychology and our emotions and carries a teaching for us on how we can evolve, how we can grow, how we can come into contact with that true nature inside. Um, so it's like there's this separation in how we see the people and how we see the plants and even in how herbs are prepared, right? And we see that, you know, a lot of the times people say, oh, you know, if you're going to treat a symptom in the body, you know, use something like a, you know, a powder or a tea or a tincture. But if you want to work with someone's psychology, you know, maybe work with a flower essence, something that has more of that vibrational property of the plant. And so we see this separation even in how the herbs are prepared. And it's like, well, these are for this kind of thing and these are for that kind of thing. And it's like, but we're whole, right? That, you know, from many traditional perspectives that, you know, our mind and our body aren't separate. Our emotions aren't separate from our mind and our body. And they're all a facet of the soul, of our consciousness, right? And so we need to heal this separation and have a model of herbal medicine that equally addresses the wholeness of the plant and the wholeness of the person. And, you know, in terms of Prepar preparing herbs, I think the pinnacle of this we're seeing in, you know, more of the phytopharmaceutical industry, the supplement industry, where, you know, the people are taking plants and separating out just single compounds or, you know, little parts of the chemistry of the plant and throwing the rest of it away. And even in home medicine making, right, whenever you're making a tincture or a vinegar or some sort of home remedy, we always end up composting the herb, end up throwing that physical plant material away after we're done. And so again, there's this separation where we're missing, so it's like there's something missing in our model of herbal medicine. And I believe that, you know, in order for you to be a truly holistic practitioner, of herbal medicine, to use herbs in a way that is really working with the whole person, that you have to use the whole plant. And we have to heal this separation in, in ourselves, in our culture, as well as in our model of herbal medicine. And this is where spagyrics comes in. So to me, the tradition of alchemy, and specifically here herbal alchemy or spagyrics, has this way of understanding people and plants that truly honors and, and recognizes that wholeness, right? The wholeness of the person, the, the body of the person, the mind of the person, the heart of the person, the consciousness, the soul of the person, as well as that within the plant. So spagyrics or herbal alchemy essentially is a truly holistic model of working with plants. And you know, a lot of people tend to think of, you know, herbal alchemy as just kind of looking at certain ways of preparing plants uh, into a medicine. But from my perspective, it goes much further than this, that, that yes, there are very specific techniques and methods that we do from the alchemical tradition to make medicines, but it's also a whole model of healing, right? It's a whole, it's an integrated model, an integrated system that's truly holistic. And, you know, to me, alchemy is really cool because it takes that word holistic to this totally different level, right? And we think, okay, holistic, using whole plants for whole people. But alchemy really takes it to this whole other level where we're seeing the whole plant and the whole person in their relationship with the wholeness of the cosmos, with creation. And that's that you know, old adage of as above, so below, as within, so without, that, that in alchemy, we're seeing how people and plants are a microcosmic reflection of the macrocosm of, uh, you know, the way I see it is like the earth and the cosmos and how all of these forces of life are present within people and plants. Now, innately, the word spagyric is classically defined as to separate and recombine. And I love that definition because 
in our culture, in our world, we and in herbal medicine, we see this dynamic of separation, separation, separation. But there's no recombination. There's no putting things back together. I mean, I think that's one of the hallmarks of science, right? Is that we'll separate apart from the whole and study it and break it down to all these little parts and then study that part and, but never reassemble it back into a model of wholeness. And I think that's where we're getting into a lot of trouble culturally. And I think this is where our practice of herbal medicine can, can evolve, can move forward, can be brought to a whole new level of wholeness. And this importance of recombination is one of the beautiful things about herbal alchemy or spagyrics. As when we're talking about actually creating a medicine, you know, we're, we're separating in alchemy. They talk about those three principles of a plant, the sulfur, the mercury, and the salt of the plant. Or from an Ayurvedic perspective, we might say that's like the three doshas or three gunas of the plant that we're separating. Or if you're from an astrology perspective, the cardinal mutable fixed qualities of that plant, we're separating them out, purifying them, and then recombining them back together into a whole holistic form of herbal medicine. And because that herb is present in the medicine in its whole state, it's going to work on the wholeness of a person, right? So we're, we're having, a, without herbal alchemy, you have a model, a practice of plant medicine where you're literally, you're using one type of herbal medicine, a spagyrically prepared herbal medicine that's going to equally address our bodies, our psychology, as well as that spiritual side of our lives. And to me, this, this recombination, it, it's all about re, recombining us as human beings into nature, right? And, and it's like, it's kind of funny hearing myself say that because it's like, well, wait, we're, we are, are already a part of nature. It's just that we have this illusion that we're not. And so to me, the power of alchemically prepared medicines have this ability to heal us in a way that we understand our connection to life. We understand our connection to the earth. We understand and feel inside of ourselves our connection to the greater wholeness of life and the impact that we're having. And through this process of of spagyrics, it's like we take the plants by separating the plant out into its components and then recombining it back together, but that's what they do for us too. So when you're working with the spagyric remedy, it's like everything you do to that plant to prepare it, now the flip side happens and it does it to you. So now that plant is going to separate out, you know, your true nature from your false nature. It's like we all have, you know, these conditioned patterns, right? Things that, you know, maybe our parents taught us or teachers or our culture, right? Like layers of an onion. It's like at the core, we've got our essential nature and then all there's all this false stuff that gets put on top of it. And in order for us to receive true healing, it's like we got to separate the true from the false, the real from the unreal, the, the real you from the things that aren't really you. And this is really what spagyric medicines do is that they're cleansing, they're re removing, they're extracting these non-essential parts of the self and purifying us, rejuvenating us so that we can come into contact with the truth of who we are, the, the, our path, our purpose, our, you know, that the essence of who we are is brought out uh, through those spagyrics. So it's, it's really neat having a model of herbal medicine that not only equally honors the wholeness of people and plants in their relationship to the wholeness of life, but having a model of working with herbs that's equally healing the body as well as supporting our spiritual growth ultimately. And this is why, you know, I call my work evolutionary herbalism because you're working with the plants to assist in your own soul's evolution, your own soul's growth. And I believe that's really what it's all about at this time. You know, things are crazy out there in the world right now. And I believe that 
that the, the plants have the ability to heal us in the ways that, that we need in order to start turning things in a positive direction, to, to contribute to the healing of the people, the culture, and the planet. And, and the tradition of alchemy holds a very unique perspective that I see as kind of missing in a lot of modern herbal medicine. And this integration of the alchemical tradition with modern herbal medicine has this incredible power and potency to have make a positive difference, to really bring true deep healing uh, to the people out there because as I said, that's what is really needed to get things moving in the right direction here. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in to this uh, new issue here on the blog and the podcast. I hope you enjoyed. If you are listening to this on the podcast, can you do me a favor and leave me a review? I, we don't have a whole lot of reviews on our podcast right now, and I'd love to get feedback. Uh, love to hear what you have to say. So if you've got a minute to spare, I'd love to get a review. If you enjoyed this video, hit that share and that like button and uh, share it with someone that loves herbal medicines. Until then, thanks so much. Take care and be well.